Good morning and welcome to the show. I have a very interesting man here in the studio today in the way of Jimmy Thorpe, who is the owner of A Superior Air Conditioning and also the coolest man in Florida. Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you, Don. You know, we've seen your commercial. I don't know what evil genius came up with that. But that would be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so evil, but a genius, you know. <laughs> The most interesting man in Florida, where you're walking down the beach with Louis the Chihuahua, you know, and people are like, wow, what's that about? It's about a superior air conditioning and what you do. Absolutely. To keep people cool. So you're a cool guy, obviously, and, you're, uh, and, you've, and your business is keeping people cool, but you also, you have a special niche in that market in that you're very concerned with indoor air quality, aren't you? Yes, yes we are. It's not just a matter of keeping people cool. Correct. No, we want to make sure that people breathe pure, clean air. It's just important. There's a lot of allergies that are out there. Uh, Northwest Florida, we deal with allergies twice a year in the spring and the fall of mm -hmm. every year. So a lot of people that have problems with breathing, you know, uh, asthma, um, and there's a lot of folks that use inhalers or have to have oxygen put back into the air mm -hmm. so they can sleep well at night. We can help these folks. So you have systems and techniques of, you know, purifying people's indoor air with their cooling systems, right? Yes, yes. I change or I try to change the air filter in the house once a month. <laughs> and that's my job. It's my, good. My wife doesn't do it, but that's my job. And sometimes I'll forget and I'll go two months and I'll pull it out and there's all this gray stuff on there. And I'm like, honey, look at this, you know. Jimmy, what is that gray stuff? Is that just dust? What is that? <laughs> I don't know if people at home really want to know what that is, but of course, you know, our skin comes off of us very regularly. Mm -hmm. So that's just dead cells, that dead skin that's on our filters. Uh, and then yeah, of course, okay. if we have pets, that's the pet dander, the pet hair that uh, continue to accumulate. And we're breathing that stuff all the time, Don. We've got to get that out of, out of the air. Yeah, I mean, if, if, especially if you have children, if you have allergies, you're breathing in dead skin cells, Probably some, <laughs> some sort of dust mites, uh, bug particles. I mean, Lord knows what else goes in there. It is, and it, it's, it's just stuff that we shouldn't have to go through. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks that have the lung problems, so we need to make sure we clean that air out. Filters definitely need to be replaced monthly, mm -hmm. minimum. Even though you can go to a lot of places that say a 60-day air filter or a 90-day air filter, no, it's best just to go ahead and take it out of the system, um, and replace it, put a new Jimmy, one in. We got to run off to the local weather, but on the other side of that, let's talk about what you can do to help people uh, breathe better air inside their homes. Oh, there's, there's lots mm -hmm. of things. The, the basic one is the UV light. The UV light helps by uh, killing the bacteria as it flows through the system. So that way it cleans the air out. Um, and in a lot of other situations, if you have newer homes, the newer homes are really tight, we need to bring some fresh air into it. So we have many options available. Um, you know, people can visit us on our website, staycoolasacucumber.com, mm -hmm. or give us a call at 850-258-3225. we got to run off to the local weather, and we'll be right back after your local weather brought to you by the West Pittman Law Firm, westpittmanlawfirm.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Jimmy Thorpe, the coolest man in Florida and the owner of A Superior Air Conditioning here on Panama City Beach and our air quality expert. We talked about, Jimmy, in a previous segment, all the gross stuff that's in dust that you take out of your air filters. Now, I would imagine some of that dust gets past your filter and gets into your ductwork, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It fills, I mean, from creating a little bit of a mat on your evaporator coil on mm -hmm. the inside, going through the blower, and then through your ductwork. Mm -hmm. And then it continues to grow up there. Now you can change a filter out pretty easily, just about anybody can do that, but how do you clean out your ducts? Well, they've got a lot of different equipment. Um, that you'd have, you'd have to call you, of course, oh, absolutely. a professional. Yeah. Call your contractor to see if they have something. Mm -hmm. We just purchased a brand new Nicron machine and this is a vacuum that is pulling 5,000 CFM of air. What's a CFM? Um, cubic cubic feet? feet per minute, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've got a vacuum and then we come back with a, um, 
what is it, 175 pounds per square inch air going right back to the vacuum to make sure we flush out all those lines inside so you your ductwork. You just super blow out that ductwork. Absolutely. Get but we just want to make sure we've got all that. dead skin out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're uh -huh. running a special right now, and uh -huh. if people could call and say that they saw us on this show, Waking Up With Don, all right. and uh, for $375 per unit, Mm -hmm. So if they have one air conditioning system in their house, we will take do. care mm -hmm. of all their duct work for $375. Wow, and that's a deal. How often should you clean your ducts? Normally it's new construction. When you're sitting there with all that sheetrock dust and everything else, it's a great time to get your duct work cleaned. And of course your contractors are taking care of that before you purchase that house. But then when houses reach that age between seven years mm -hmm. and 10, you know, it depends if they're using the real cheap filters, I would definitely say between five and seven years. If they're mm -hmm. using a media filter, then when they hit that 10 year mark, when you can start seeing the black dust coming out of the vents, it's time because yes. that's what you're breathing. When you have to vacuum your vents and you're starting to, <laughs> and which I have done in, our, in a previous home, you know it's time to clean out those ducts. Yeah. So 375 and that number again is what? 850-258-3225, or they can schedule online, which is staycoolasacucumber.com. Jimmy Thorpe, air quality expert, owner of A Superior Air Conditioning. Thanks so much for coming on the show, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm breathing a little easier just from talking with him. <laughs> we'll be right back after your Mad Hatter Minute. Hi. This is David Lovett, and this is your Mad Hatter Minute. Changing your engine oil is one of the single most important vehicle maintenance acts you can perform on your car. Gasoline, transmission fluid, water, coolant, brake fluid, all are very important fluids that must be changed, but none of them have such a negative impact if it's not performed regularly than your engine oil. When your engine doesn't receive the, the, the proper amount of oil that it should, or if the oil that it's receiving is dirty and contaminated, it begins to shut down. Eventually, your engine will seize. It'll stop running. And then you're looking at a very, very expensive auto repair. So how often should you replace your engine oil? Well, most experts agree that between three and 5,000 miles is the optimal amount of time to replace your, replace your engine oil. If you really wanna know, turn to your operator's guide that's usually located in your glove compartment probably the most least read book in the world. Open it up, we go to the back, and see what type of intervals and what type of oil that, that your manufacturer recommends for changing. Changing engine oil is a very simple process, and a lot of people change, change their own oil. If you're one of these do-it-yourselfers, take some very basic advice. Change the engine oil filter. The engine oil filter captures all the soot, all the grime, all the contaminants out of the old oil. You drain the oil oil out, you put new oil back in, you're putting it on right on top of that dirty, nasty filter. All that sludge and all that grime is going to circulate right back out of the filter and right back into your motor. I'm David Lovett, and this has been your Mad Hatter Minute. Hey folks, this is Joshua Brown with Mad Hatter on 23rd Street. Is your check engine light on? If it is, text M-A-D-H-A-T-28, that's Mad Hat 28, to 24247, and we'll check it for free. Welcome back to the show. I'm here at Emerald Coast Dental Sleep Medicine with Dr. Tara Griffin. And you know, we have talked about these appliances uh, quite a few times. I mean, we've, we've looked at these things and, and uh, you, you sort of kind of, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the way they work is they kind of reshape the structures in your mouth to open up the airways so you can sleep better. Absolutely. Now, it, now this thing has got a couple little adjustments on it where you can actually spread bone. Yes. Right? And, yes. and, and, and actually shape it just like you would have braces on your teeth. Yeah. You've got this cool laser here now uh, that'll help speed that healing along too. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about these things and, and I can see sort of kind of how that would go in, but I've never actually seen anybody wear one. Could you, would you be able to demonstrate how this would go in your mouth? Yes. I mean, and how you could do it? <laughs> I can. I have mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. own um, wow. okay. and I've, I've been through treatment for about 18 months for TMJ problems and I've been able to alleviate all the symptoms that I've had, mm -hmm. uh, as well as help align my smile, uh, my teeth, and broaden my smile. 
Uh, and so How does that I work for you. I mean, are you seeing it, results? Uh, absolutely. I, I have some great before and after pictures, actually. Oh, that, uh, okay. The change in the smile, and uh, but mainly the joint and mm -hmm. the stability in the joint, reduction in pain. Another thing that I was experiencing was daytime fatigue. And so I went through a sleep test. I did mm -hmm. not have sleep apnea, but I had a small narrow airway and I wasn't, I wasn't breathing well when I was sleeping at night. So I, I started the therapy and I have worn it for 18 months, but I sleep in it nightly just to retain where I am. And it opens up your airway a little bit more. Yeah, it will, mm -hmm. it, it's restructured everything. And mm -hmm. this is actually the second appliance, but I've, I've maxed out you know, the first mm -hmm. one. I'll show you how it works. Okay. Okay. And it actually pretty comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. And you're speaking pretty uh, well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> now say, Sally sells, she sells. My no, you don't have to say that. But, uh, but it, it doesn't look like it's all that, um, you know, uh, uh, all that disruptive. It's not you know, at all. It's, it's very comfortable. And actually, once you get used to it, uh, mm -hmm. because you do sleep so well with it, uh, when I ask patients not to wear it for a follow-up home sleep test, they it's they they don't want to go without it. Oh, you know, so they, they kind of miss it. Yeah, they do miss it. Yeah. When you put that, when you, like you're a first timer and you get one of these things, does, do you feel any different right away? Does it open things up right away? Does it push things out of the way? Or does it take time? It really typically work? takes time, and uh -huh. it depends on the design. We have some different designs on mm -hmm. these, but um, yeah, it, it it can normally take a little time. Now with me, the uh, the difference in my energy. And the daytime fatigue I was mm -hmm. having within two to three days, uh, my fatigue was gone. So my sleep improved that quickly uh, just from using that because it helped to eliminate clenching and grinding of my teeth. And mm -hmm. neurologically, it stimulates a lot. So it, it's, it's okay. yeah, it, it's very interesting. So it's a case by case so. basis. Well, and, I, and I'm sure each one of these is tailor made to yes. you know to all uh, each individual yeah. uh, patient. You know, uh, you know, sleep apnea, sleeplessness people being fatigued and tired, it, it's almost an epidemic. It certainly is an epidemic, and uh, we're happy to be able yeah. to offer treatment options that are alternative you know, to things that people can't tolerate, like the CPAP machines for many people. Mm -hmm. They can't tolerate them, and the oral appliances are, are really a best line of treatment for many people. Yeah, and you can speed that along with the new uh, laser, too. We certainly can. Yeah, when patients come in for their follow-ups, we, mm -hmm. we can laser inside the mouth to actually speed up the growth and development. So you would actually stick that thing in someone's mouth? If there's a different mm -hmm. tip that we put on it, intraoral uh -huh. tip, and uh, yeah, and we just wave it around uh, the sutures, and it actually stimulates healing and, and development. And how often would you have to do that? Would that be a weekly thing? Or? With this type of treatment, mm -hmm. we would do it every six months when the patients came in for their regular follow-up. Okay. It would just be part of that process. Just give them a little jump start with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And I'm sure you've got a lot of success stories to share with us we, as well. We do. We definitely do. And we'll talk about that next time. But thank you so much, doctor, yes. for letting us behind the scenes here and, and showing us how that thing actually works. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Dr. Stephen Favaloro from Forest Park Animal Hospital, and we're going to talk about what else? Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. No, it's all over the news. Well, you know, we, we always get calls, like when swine flu came out, and said, yeah. can dogs get this, can dogs get that, you know? So, you know, right now, of course, now, that's I, the biggest yeah, I, thing it's on It's a the funny news. question, though. It's like, can dogs get swine flu? Well, swine get swine flu, yeah. so why not? You know, well, I mean. you know and <laughs> it's, it's so popular right now. Like, um, you know, my kids, like, uh, one of them had a fever, you know, this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, you probably have Ebola. And my older son <laughs> said, ha ha, that's the joke we all say at school. You know, he's in eighth grade. I said, yeah. so I'm cool for school still? You know? Yeah, yeah, you are cool. <laughs> but You're it's like, the cool dad. everybody's <laughs> talking about it. So, yeah. you know, I figured it won't be long before we get that phone call. Yeah, I think my dog has Ebola. Yeah, or can they get it or, you know, yeah. whatnot. And yeah. so I've had other doctors on the show talking about Ebola just sure. like in human terms. Mm -hmm. And statistically, you're, you're actually pretty safe if you just practice hand washing. Absolutely. And, you know, the basic yep. protocols. But dogs, they don't wash their hands. No, they don't. Yeah. And they'll eat things that they, you know, shouldn't. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what they did and... and and I don't know all the names of the towns that they did this in, but they, they went to places where there was Ebola outbreaks, and this mm -hmm. was like in the 90s and whatnot. And what they did is they, they, they tested the dogs that lived in those communities, and where some of the bigger outbreaks were, you know, up to 30% of the dogs tested positive for the Ebola virus. Wow. Now, were the, they sick? Were the dogs were, sick? They were that not only were they, they were not sick and they could not find where they were actually transmitting it through uh, or shedding it through urine or feces but but that doesn't mean that they can't 
you know, mm -hmm. but they do, we just know that, that hasn't been documented. And so what would happen is the dogs, you know, over there, they're, you know, not as sanitary and, you know, people would die and they wouldn't always, you know, bury them. Dogs would eat the carcasses. They would eat like, Human you know, remains. vomitus, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. And, and that's how they would get it. And, uh, you know, in humans, it's a seven day incubation period, but we don't really know what the incubation period is in dogs right now, at least in, not that I've read. And, um, but they can carry it, but they, they're not, they're not sick. And, um, so do they shed, you know, and since we're in such common contact with them, you know, sure. it, it is an important, uh, thing to, that we need to talk about. And I, you know, I think more research needs to be done on it. But I mean, if you think about how, you know, close we are to our pets, yeah. You know, if they can get infected by it and they're asymptomatic, then how do you know? Well, of course, the dogs would have to eat those things mm -hmm. around here, and you know, you're not seeing you know a lot of dead carcasses on the side of the road. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. true. You know, <laughs> it's been a while since my dog has eaten human remains. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so I got the stones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I guess you know theoretically, conceivably, so, your dog you know, could become a carrier. So the question yeah. is is you know, can they get it? Can they get it? Yeah, dogs can get it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they can they can get it and they can carry it, but once they clear it, you know, then they don't shed, but do they shed before they clear it? And I think the question, is, the, the, the jury's still out on that. And, and then, Dr. Favalora, it, it begs the question, can other animals carry it as well? Well, I mean, if you like to <clears throat> say the bubonic plague was carried by rats and fleas and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, so could that happen? So th I, I, when I was doing a little bit of research, uh, you know, they talked about, um, you know, experimentally infesting like guinea pigs and horses and things like that, and uh, they could be infected by it, but asymptomatic. Yeah. You know, so, mm. um, but there's been no known, um, you know, natural infections in horses and guinea pigs, but there have been natural infections in dogs. Wow. So your dog can get Ebola. <laughs> It can, but it's <laughs> but, asymptomatic. But, and they're and, asymptomatic. And, and do they do they, they shed spread it? it? Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, well, and right I, now the research says no. Research, well, I think research says it's inconclusive. You know, we mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, not enough information on it. But the chances of your dog getting I mean, Ebola are astronomically how bad? It would have high. to be so bad yeah, here before that ever happened. That's true. You know, because you know where these other places would get it, the dogs would go out and they would get well, infected animals. places in animals. Africa and rural yeah. Africa. Yeah, they, they would yeah. get it out in the wild and then bring it back, you know, or bring a car carcass back. And so that's how the dogs would get it. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a lot of African green around. monkeys running around. <laughs> 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 Dr. Stephen Favalora from Forest Park Animal Hospital, thank you for tamping down the, <laughs> the craziness over Ebola. Yes, your dog can get it, and no, your dog doesn't. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Marty Howell from Bay County Animal Services. And Marty's an animal control officer and you brought a friend with you today. You've got Brandy. We got Brandy, yep. She's a, she's a two year old uh, lab mix. Mm -hmm. uh, she was actually found as a stray with, with five puppies. Oh, so, geez. so she was walking the streets with five puppies. Yeah, so uh, you know, we actually were able to get her back to the kennel so we could take her her so she could take her puppies. And mm -hmm. you know, she's been nursing them for about the last eight weeks. We've had her since August 20th. And she's done a good job, job taking care of her, you know, of her family. You know, it's time for us to help her find a family of her own. So. And what about her puppies? Are they eligible they're, they're for adoption, adoption now? Correct. So uh, they're old enough to go into a home. Correct. Uh, you know, but Brandy, she knows she's been, she's been, uh, she's been spayed. Mm -hmm. uh, she's had all her shots. She's ready to go. You know, mm -hmm. loves to walk. Yeah, and she, she's, you know, doesn't mm -hmm. mind being a little bit of a lap dog as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just kind of a nice, easygoing dog that. Just loves to be with people and you know, good with other animals, good with all people and kids. Just, just a great dog. And Brandy would make a, a welcome addition to almost any family. It oh, looks absolutely. Like. And she's absolutely. got the whole maternal thing done. Yep. She, she looks a little thin, but that's because she just had right. litter. She just, I said, she just finished nursing her puppies, which they'll typically lose a little bit of weight uh, during that process. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for us to, you know, you know, just focus on her care and uh, get her, her back to. Yep. Yeah. You know. But she's, you know, but she's ready to go to a, to a new home and you know make a you know a great addition. Yeah, Bay County Animal Services that just does a, such a great job. And she's spayed and, uh, and um, has had all the shots. Yep, right? rabies. Uh, you know her foreign one, mm -hmm. uh, border tail. So she, you know, been dewormed the whole bit. 
So basically, all you know, all it takes is. And she has a chip too, doesn't she? And she's microchip. Yeah. So you know, if she ever gets lost again, we can, you know, we can, you know, if she gets picked up, she can be scanned. We mm -hmm. can find out who the owner is, give them a call back, and get her back home. And how many how many puppies did she have? She had five. Five. She had five puppies. Yeah. So she was busy. She's been busy with them for the last couple of months, kind of, you know, getting yeah. them ready to be adopted. Yeah, isn't that something? And I know, Brandy, you have a story, but she's not saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she would make a, a, a great addition, as would her puppies. Right. And if we wanted to get in touch with you, I guess it's 767-3333. Uh, uh, Correct. 767-3333. And when I go in to adopt Brandy or one of her puppies, um, $25, is that it? it it's, it's $25, and that's, mm -hmm. so again, she's spayed, she's been spayed, she's got her shots, that covers everything. Mm -hmm. uh, for her for her puppies, because they're not old enough to be spayed, spayed or neutered yet, it's a still a $25 adoption fee, mm -hmm. but you do have to put a $100 deposit down, uh, and we actually give you a voucher for the spayed or neutering to be performed. Once you uh, bring proof back that that spayed or neutering has been performed, then we process the return of your $100. So it's still only $25 to adopt, but it, the hundred dollars just to encourage and ensure that people actually follow through with the spaying and neutering, so we can try and help curb some of the overpopulation of animals. Well, thank you for everything you do for our furry friends. Well, thanks and, for having uh, us. Bay County Animal Services, come on down and uh, and adopt Brandy or one of her puppies at seven six seven thirty three thirty three.